Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry the Chupacabra, and today we're going to be doing a tutorial on setting up a Game Boy Advance slash Game Boy emulator on your Windows 10 PC so that you can play around with all of the uh, Game Boy Advance or Game Boy ROMs that you feel like uh, messing with with either your keyboard or, in my case, I'm using an Xbox One controller uh, to your heart's content. And normally, you could go and you could just go online and you could just search for Game Boy Advance emulator, and it would take you to places like Emulator Paradise or uh, the Emulator Zone. Unfortunately, the most advanced Game Boy Advance emulator, this Visual Boy Advanced, um, this isn't even the good one anymore. It was open sourced, and these versions, I haven't really had a lot of luck with them running on Windows 10 or even some versions of Windows 7, uh, they just freeze up and they don't seem to work, and it's because some of them haven't been updated in a while. And some of these other ones are a little harder to use because they require specialized file types that are extracted from the various ROM files. Now, the one that you're going to want to look for is one called Visual Boy Advanced-M, which is similar to the one that you saw on the other site. But this is the updated one, I believe from the maker of the original Visual Boy Advanced, and this one is capable of playing both regular Game Boy games, and also Game Boy Advance games. And uh, you can't unfortunately get the download from their website right now, because it has exploded. So instead, um, I don't really trust places like SourceForge, because sometimes they have the wrong version, but I will rehost the beta version that I have on um, Google Drive. It's not modified in any way from when I got it, and uh, you can download it and play around with it for yourself. I originally had to download it from a Reddit thread. So this is the one we're going to use, and once you've got it, you'll just open up uh, the file. Whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. You're just going to open up the file location where you want to store it, and then just drag it in there. So I'm going to use this one here called Visual Boy Advance-M dash whatever beta 2, and obviously I've uh, tried to attempt to use a lot of these different bad boys, and I'm just going to drag this over into this folder. This is going to be my Game Boy Advance test folder, but you could call it like, I'm going to emulate all the things on my desktop because I'm cool. It's a mouthful, but I don't judge you, man. You, you do what you need to do. And then I'm just going to extract this right here because all that should be in there is a singular program uh, that turns on the emulator, and it's just this cute little box. Oh, and it, it already wants to update, so you don't have to worry about... So I guess the SourceForge download is the, uh, the recommended secure download, the trusted download, so I'll just put that one in the, the, the video description for you to download it yourself. And this thing obviously itself updates so that you don't have to worry about it. Now that I really like. Um, I actually just got this. And it's already been updated so that it's running uh, the newest version, slick and smooth and fancy-like. Now, the other version that I have in here, this one, not that one, um, where did I put it? I don't know. I had another Visual Boy Advance-M, but that was the GitHub repository, and that's just a bunch of developer hoodoo, and I have no idea what you're supposed to do with that. So anyway, now that this has been updated, and the other one has been labeled the old version. Now we have the Visual Boy Advance dash M um, Git. And this is all you need. Like, it's already hooked up to your controller. If it's plugged in and it should start working, you can also go into the uh, one of the options deals like inputs and you can configure your joystick. But for the most part, this should work automatically without having to fidget with it. It worked with my Xbox controller, it worked with my PS4 controller when I plugged that in here. So you shouldn't need to mess around with this, but this is all pretty standard and uh, straightforward. Now all you need to do now is take your ROMs folder. I've got Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green in here. And I'm going to copy this because I'm already using it. And I'm going to put it in here. And you can get ROMs from just about anywhere on the internet. They're pretty, pretty basic and pretty standard. Like, I looked up uh, Game Boy Advanced for, like, Leaf Green version, and here's Pokemon Leaf Green, released in 20, 2004, and you can download it from Dope ROMs, 
And there's also like, uh, you can find them on these EMU Paradise websites or the um, Emulator Zone website. They're all over the place, so just take your pick. They should all be the same. Make sure you search for the USA version, because often a lot of these Game Boy games are released all over the world in French, Portuguese, Cantonese, Japanese, Taiwanese, all the eases. Uh, so make sure you get the correct version, because otherwise, you know, you're going to have a hell of a time trying to understand um, instructions in Spanish if you don't know the language. But once you've got this ROMs folder in here, go back to your Game Boy Advanced emulator. You go to File, Open Game Boy GB. This should say GBA if it was a little bigger. I guess it doesn't, but this is Game Boy Color, um, GBC. But we wanted to open up a Game Boy Advance file. So we're going to go into our ROMs folder, and we're going to select the Fire Red Edition. Oh, and there it goes. It's loading up, although sometimes the, the full screen um, feature doesn't quite work out the way it should. But hey, what, what do you want? It's free. And there. Uh, oh, uh-oh. The, the Pokemon, the fighting. Larry, the fighting. What do I do? I don't know, Timmy. But the other thing that you're probably going to want to do, you're going to want to go into a uh, video. And you're going to want to go to Configure. Is this what I wanted? Well, I'm, I like to put my output mode to OpenGL. It, it tends to render a little bit better. And what you want to do here is something called Screen Filter. Because you might notice here in the background, as you switch around the different video options, I'm going to put that back to Simple. Sometimes when you scale this up, depending on your computer, some of these delicious pixels can be a bit um, blurry. This is actually kind of a little bit blurry. So the way to get around that is you go into video, go to configure, go to advance, you go to filter mode. And let me see here. I'm trying to remember which one I was using before. It really, you just kind of mess around with and you select the one that you feel will work the best for you. Let's try uh, BRZ six times or it'll crash the game, the emulator, so let me go over here and I will see what I was using before. Here we go. The one you probably want to use is... Here we go, configure, advanced, simple 4x. So I could probably just switch that to simple. And I'm gonna open this up. Uh, open recent, open the leaf green edition. And that, that already kind of looks a little better. I mean, the problem with this is you're going to get pixel blending. So some of these little edge pixels are not going to seem as sharp because they're the wrong color. But when you're emulating, sometimes that's just what you're going to have to deal with. And, you know, whatever. Just play around with the settings. They're all pretty simple and straightforward. And then sometimes when you play a game, because you don't have necessarily the right BIOS file or whatever, um, just make sure when you're saving your game, you use one of these save state slots just in case so that you don't lose any of your game files. You get like 10 of these. You can also save them individually to different files on your computer. So just keep that in mind when you're doing the stuff with the things. Because sometimes there's just stuff missing. Sometimes you might want to play with other BIOS files. It happens. Use the save states. That way you make sure that you keep all your stuff. And then you got some other tools in here that I haven't really played around with much. You can play around with the sound channels. You can even do some limited amount of screen capture right through the emulator itself, which I think is kind of cool. You can start a games recording. You can put it somewhere. I don't recommend using that. I personally use other software to do that because this is all rendered in very standard methodologies. And you can also go in here and you can set it so that you don't see the menu bar when you're in full screen mode. So yeah, I mean, that's about it. These are pretty easy to work with. I'm actually very impressed. Um, so give it a shot. I've got links in the description to mess around with all of this stuff. Some recommended websites where you can find ROMs that I've had uh, pretty good experiences with. I've not had any ROMs like explode on me or bug out or anything. So I hope this helps you out. I mean, it's just a pretty simple stuff. You just grab the file, extract it, update it, Enter a ROM, save it, and you're good to go. So until next time, I've been your host, Larry the Chupacabra Man. Got any questions, let me know. I mean, it's pretty easy for me to fidget around and figure these things out. And I'll catch you guys and gals next time. Uh, you know, like, subscribe, maybe check out the gaming channel. We're starting a Pokemon Leaf Green Edition playthrough 
very soon. And yeah, catch you guys and guys later. Toodles.